Good morning. We'll continue our discussion on the third module of Geotechnical Engineering 1. Now, we started off with the principle of effective stress wherein we discussed the total, the neutral and the effective stresses. We brushed up on a few terms including the quicksand condition, the critical hydraulic gradient and a few numerical problems. Later on, we moved on to the stresses in soil due to loaded areas, wherein we started off with the Businesk equation. We went to the vertical stress beneath a strip loaded area. And now, we'll try to see the stress under load on a circular area. Now, let's assume that there is a loaded circular area of radius capital R. And like this, let Q, small letter Q, be the load intensity in kilonewton per meter, meter square. Now, if you are interested to get the stress, the vertical stress at a point P below the center of the circular area at a depth Z, you can use this equation. Sigma Z P equal to I C multiplied by Q. So, the vertical stress at point P below the center of the circle at a depth z is given by ic multiplied by q where ic is a function of radius r and depth z given by 1 minus 1 by 1 plus r by z square raised to 3 by 2. So in short r and z will influence ic and ic will in turn influence sigma c sigma z p. So when R by Z is almost equal to 0, IC will be equal to 0. And when R by Z is infinity, IC will be equal to 1. So in short, for a very large loaded area, the vertical stress at a relatively shallow depth, meaning Z tends to 0 and R by Z tends to infinity, will be q itself or when i is equal to 1 sigma z p will be equal to q now stress under the corner point of a load on a rectangular area earlier it's a circular area now you have a rectangular area which is loaded and if you're interested to get the stress under the corner point let's assume that you have rectangle of sides breadth D and length L, breadth being the shorter dimension and length L being the longer dimension. The vertical stress at a point Z depth below the corner is given by sigma Z P equal to Q multiplied by I N. Quite analogous to I C multiplied by Q which is the one that you had seen in the previous slide for circular area. Now you have I n multiplied by Q. Now, breadth and length of a rectangle is given here. Depth Z is given here. And the point of interest is point P, which is beneath the rectangular area below its corner. And that rectangular area is loaded with load intensity Q kilonewton per meter square. So, Q is in kilonewton per meter square, or I n is the influence factor given by this equation. It's a function of m and n. The, uh, the usual phase expression that I get from the students uh, like this when I try to explain this equation. But you don't have to buy hard this equation. Uh, this is the function of m and n, and of course you'll get these from a chart. So M is equal to B by Z and N is L by Z, B being the shorter dimension. So once you know breadth, length and depth, you'll get M and N. So for calculation purpose, the value of I N is better represented in Faram's chart corresponding to M and N. So in short, you don't have to buy hard this long equation. You'll get I N from this chart once you know M and n. So uh, for example I have a Faram's chart here m is marked in the x-axis and values of n are marked in different curves. 
0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, etc. are the values of n, whereas in x you have m marked in 0 0.1, 1, 1, 10 in logarithm, logarithmic scale. For example, if you have m equal to 1 and n equal to 0 0.5, inference factor can be found out from m equal to 1. There's a line which goes up and it meets n equal to 0.5, which is this curve at this point, right? m equal to 1 and n equal to 0.5 is this point. So go to your left side, project it onto the y-axis and the value that you get is 0 0.12. So Na or In in our equation is 0 0.12. So that's the method in which you get the inference factor for the corner point of a rectangular area. Now, if you are interested for the stress under load on a rectangular area, not beneath the corner point, but within the plan area of rectangle like this, you have a rectangle A, B, C, D, which is loaded. And you are interested to know the vertical stress at a point P at a depth Z below the surface. But that point P is not below the corner. It's not below any of the corners of the rectangle. So in that case, what you do is you subdivide this rectangle in such a way that each of the rectangles thus formed has a corner at the point where the vertical stress is to be determined in plan. So I have to find the vertical stress at point P. I have to subdivide the rectangle ABCD like this, such that each of the rectangles thus formed, 1, 2, 3, and 4, will have P as a corner point. right? So in short, you can apply the previous equation of IN multiplied by Q only when the point P is at a corner. So in order to make point P a corner of the rectangle, you subdivide so that each of the rectangles thus formed has a corner at P. So now it's quite simple. I have four rectangles and rectangle number one, AEPH, let's say that it has length L equal to AE and breadth B equal to AH. And from length L and breadth B and depth Z, you'll get the influence vector IN1 for rectangle 1. Likewise, you get length and breadth for the second rectangle. Using length, breadth and depth, you get M and N. And from M and N, using the Faram's charge, you get AN2 for the second rectangle, etc. So the total sigma ZP will be IN1 plus IN2 plus IN3 plus IN4 multiplied by Q. So fundamentally, you are dividing the rectangles in such a way that each of these formed rectangles will have corner point at P and you find the corresponding inference factors IN1, N2, N3, N4, add them up, multiply it by the stress intensity Q and what you get is the vertical stress at point P. Now this is case number one, when the point P is within the plan area of the rectangle. What if point P is outside the plan area of the rectangle? Same principle, you have the rectangle, the loaded rectangle is shown here, A, B, C, D, and point P is not within the plan, instead it's outside the plan. So this is point P, its projected point on the surface is again P, I've written it as P itself. So in, even in this case what you do is you subdivide the rectangle in such a way that each of the rectangles thus formed has a corner point where the vertical stress is to be determined in the plan. So in this picture you have to be careful in knowing that ABCD is a rectangle which is loaded. I have shaded that rectangle. The bigger rectangle is not loaded. The bigger rectangle is drawn just to make sure that point P is a corner of that bigger rectangle. So this is a perspective view. If I draw a plan, it looks like this. A, B, C, D is a loaded rectangle. Point P is somewhere here in plan. So I've drawn a bigger rectangle A, E, P, F such that it has a corner at P and the loaded rectangle doesn't have a corner at P. 
so you have a rearrangement of terms to get sigma zp so sigma zp in this particular case is q multiplied by i n 1 minus i n 2 minus i n 3 plus i n 4 where i n 1 is a rectangle a e p f it has a corner point at p i n 2 is b e p h b e p h so this rectangle again it has a corner point at p i n 3 is d g p f this rectangle again it has a corner point at p so now i n 1 minus i n 2 minus i n 3 means a big rectangle minus this rectangle minus this rectangle so this area c g p h got subtracted twice so i have added that as i n 4 i n 4 is c g p h so basically you are considering only the rectangle which is loaded here but in order to impl implement that you have to have a bigger rectangle with corner at p and all the influence factors that you have found out corresponding to rectangles which share a corner at p aepf beph dgpf and cgph so the big rectangle minus first rectangle minus second rectangle plus this rectangle that is a way in which you find the stress intensity at a point which is outside the plane area of a rectangle 